when proper endodontic care demands several visits because of multiple canals, infection, or some other problems, the patient's demeanor at subsequent visits may well be based on what yours was like at their first visit. Occasionally, an endo procedure can be done in one visit, but usually only when the tooth was vital or has a single canal. This can certainly make for a happier patient. Never promise a one-visit root canal, though. Proper and efficient root canal therapy demands attention to all of these details. The single most important step is the very one that you're doing at that moment. Every instrument must be available at its moment of need, and by imaginarily following the course of treatment, the items needed at each step can be predicted. We'll look at the individual instruments in just a moment. If a tooth is diseased, the goal is to replace the warm, dark, moist pulp space, which is the perfect home for infection, with a sterile, airtight packing that prevents a recurrence of infection. Look at this overview of the root canal therapy process. First, the tooth is anesthetized and a rubber shield is placed to prevent saliva contamination. Next, the tooth is opened. the diseased nerve tissue removed, and the area inside cleaned and sterilized. A temporary filling is placed, and the patient is rescheduled for a second visit for completion. At the final visit, these steps are repeated, except we add the gutta percha packing before replacing the temporary filling for the final time. Proper endodontic treatment depends on a sterile field and profound anesthesia. Most doctors use a topical anesthetic first. All doctors use the rubber dam in endotherapy. High and slow speed hand pieces are needed, along with access burrs like the high speed number six and the straight fissure burr. The large slow speed round burr is effective after reaching the softer dentin within. Gates Glidden's are the long, football-shaped, slow-speed burrs on the right rear of the burr block. They follow and gently open the canals. The barbed brooch effectively grabs and removes a bulk of the diseased nerve tissue. It resembles a file. The variously sized files, each set to length with rubber stops and a ruler, help shape and clean the canals. The debris is removed through irrigation using alcohol, disinfectants, peroxide and bleach, or some other solution of the doctor's choosing. After the inside is dried with tiny paper cones or paper points, a slow setting cement sealer is spun into the space. The rubber gutta percha points are sequentially placed and compacted. Any excess is removed using a hot hand instrument called a plugger. Throughout the treatment, the field is kept clean and dry using suction. At various stages, x-rays are made, ultimately to assess the degree of obturation or seal of the internal spaces using the gutta percha. As mentioned before, endotherapy may require multiple visits. The entire array of instruments should be assembled each time, though, anticipating and allowing for the completion at that particular visit if it's possible. After the patient is comfortably seated, the area to be treated is anesthetized. There is no substitute for using a rubber dental dam in endotherapy. It keeps saliva out of the treatment area and helps prevent instruments, chemicals, and heat from harming the patient, thereby making treatment easier on the patient and the staff both. Notice the assistant is marking and pre-punching the holes in the dam for the tooth to be treated, according to the doctor's preference. Sometimes only the treatment tooth is exposed through the dam. At other times, additional teeth are displayed. The size of the hole corresponds with the size of the tooth that will be passing through it. Be sure to help the patient understand why the rubber dam is used. Keep in mind 
that some patients may strongly protest its use, citing a suffocating feeling. Be reassuring and firm in its importance. Make sure that you don't cover their nose. Using scissors, carefully trim the dam to fit it if needed. Current standards of care require using a dental dam during root canal therapy, and a patient's request for exception should not necessarily be honored. Notice the variety in rubber dam materials. Lighter latex rubber dams improve visibility but may tear more easily. Retainer clamps with wings, these small projections on the sides of the beaks, can be placed with the dental dam attached to it, all as one unit. Always tie a piece of floss to the retainer's bow to allow retrieving it in case it becomes displaced while in the patient's mouth. Note that, as a rule, the larger beaked retainers are used on larger teeth and smaller beaked retainers are used on smaller teeth. Also, the beak's shape helps determine which teeth it fits, corresponding with the root's shape. After selecting the proper retainer and placing floss on it, the retainer is placed on the tooth with the rubber dam attached if it's a winged retainer, and if not, the dam can be stretched over the retainer's bow after it's placed on the tooth. Then the interproximal areas of rubber dam are flossed downward, snapping it into place, and the rubber dam's edges are inverted. Take extra care to ensure a proper seal around the tooth. The patient's lips can be protected with a coating of lip balm or covered with a paper rubber dam napkin. Finally, the nylon frame grabs the dam and keeps it spread tight and away from the patient's face. Try not to use metal frames since x-rays can't pass through them. You might even snap a floss loop ligature between the teeth and tie it around the tooth being treated. Do whatever it takes to keep moisture out of the treatment area. With the dental dam in place and the tooth anesthetized, an opening is made in the tooth to access the nerve. The suction tip is shown properly positioned for best visibility and effectiveness. If the nerve of the tooth is still alive, a barbed brooch can be used at this point to remove it, maybe even in one piece. The double-ended endodont explorer is specially designed to allow probing the depth of the tooth for the canal openings. The doctor alternates probings with handpiece activity. Special burrs, called Gates Glidens, can be used in the slow-speed handpiece. These safely open the tops of the root canals without risking injury to the adjacent dentin. Once accessed, the length of each of the tooth's canals must be determined. The doctor first makes approximations by measuring an x-ray of the treatment tooth. Then, small files are set to length using rubber stops and placed in each canal. The rubber stop helps limit extending the file out and beyond the root tip. The preliminary working length x-ray is now made. The closeness of the file's end to the root tip determines if the file must be shortened or lengthened. Remember, the goal of the treatment is to reach within a desired distance from the root tip with the filling material. Electronic depth finders are also available that numerically show the canal depths. They only work in a dry field, however. The doctor then precisely shapes the canals using progressively larger files, whose number coincides with the size of its tip. For instance, a number 10 file has a tenth of a millimeter tip, a number 50 file a half millimeter tip, a number 100 file a one millimeter tip, and so on. As the files get bigger, they are marked shorter with rubber stops in half or one millimeter increments depending on the doctor. This results in tapered canals. Some doctors also take advantage of special endodontic handpieces and their related files. A small, hot pot of glass beads may be used to sterilize the files during treatment. It is not a substitute for autoclaving them between patients, though. 
Irrigants help flush the loosened debris from the canals. Many doctors find that alternating bleach and peroxide causes a turbulent reaction within, forcing the debris from the chamber. Make sure that the debris and the irrigants expressed are all suctioned away from the treatment field using the high volume evacuation. Alcohol, Paradex brand oral disinfectants, and other liquids are suitable irrigants. Just follow your doctor's preference. In the end, the canals are now free of bacteria and properly shaped for closure.